بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the After Maghrib podcast The Muharram and the Arba'een season this year I think we can safely say was something which brought a tear to all of our eyes The number of people we saw, the passion we witnessed in the Majalis and in the Ziyarah in Karbala was something absolutely incredible For me this year was my first walk in Arba'een and I have a lot of stories to tell and I'm really excited to share that with you But before we get into that, let's say salam to our guest. My wonderful co-host Sayyid Ali Radawi. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Wa alaikum as Ahmad. Qabla Allah amalkum. Ziyara maqbula. Insha'Allah. How are you keeping? Alhamdulillah, I'm great. Alhamdulillah. It's good to have you here again. Good and just be next to you again. It's been a few weeks. It's been... Uh, it's been about two, three weeks. Two, three weeks, yeah. yeah. And of course, Mahdi Taqi, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum How are you doing? I'm right, alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Khadim al Hussein. Mehdi, so I wish, I wish. Mehdi um, has been working. I'm sure a lot of us mm. know the the work Mehdi does in in, in the community, um, and the role he plays for the Shia youth in London. Um, he's he's an inspiration to us, Stuff and mashallah, at such a young age. Stuff but um, yeah, because right, we learn from you and these kind of podcasts and these initiatives. Not Alhamdulillah, at all. not at all. Stuff Habibi, Stuff so we want to we want to obviously talk about our experience because this was um, my first year. Said you've been. I've been, alhamdulillah, I've been blessed to go a number of times. I think this was my fifth Arba'in mm. ziyara. And uh, how many times have you been? Um, we have this conversation outside, actually. Alhamdulillah, this year was my seventh year in a row. Mashallah. Um, I've Mashallah. been a couple of times to Arba'in when I was a kid. But when I used to go, we used to go mostly for the non-packed ziyarat. It was more for Sha'ban. I believe we went in Muharram as well, 2010. But in terms of Arba'in, alhamdulillah, it was my seventh year in a row. Yeah. Since 2016, I believe my maths might be off now, but I'm pretty sure seven years in a row. So, you, so you went throughout the whole COVID. Yes, era. I went COVID year as well, 2020. Okay. okay. How how is it? How was it differed? Um. Yeah. I need the co- how COVID year differed from other yeah. years. Weirdly enough, COVID year the ziara. I'm sure the boys who came, the very few boys, alhamdulillah, were blessed enough to go in the COVID year. Was my favorite year actually mm, okay. COVID year, and I think the only year that matched with it would have been this year. Mm. Um, that's from like a personal perspective The COVID year in comparison to this year Alhamdulillah, so I'm sure both of you saw The number of people this year was unreal Mashallah, It was something yeah. that I, yani, in the last seven years I've never seen mm. I think the night we arrived to Karbala I think I got there four, three or four nights before Arba'in And I remember telling my family I was like, it is more packed now Four nights before Arba'in in the middle of the day Than Mashallah. it was the night of Arba'in last year Yes. Wow. COVID year was completely empty. Mm. I remember we were mm. in Najaf, and when we got to the shrine, usually the most packed time I see in Najaf is a week before Arba'in because nobody's left for the walk yet. I remember a week before Arba'in, we walked up and we held the shrine of Imam Ali. Mashallah. In Imam Al Hussein's shrine, three, four days before Arba'in, we were walking up, grabbing to the shrine like no one was there. I think two or three nights before the night of Arba'in, I think the Kuwaiti government gave a few people access the yeah. Iranian government gave a few people access quite a few governments allowed it so people flooded in but it wasn't the massive numbers that we saw mm, this year of course, yeah, but yeah. it was very very weird that year mm. Mawakib every maybe one in every four or five Mawakib were running mm. it wasn't there wasn't a million Iranians <laughs> it was you saw Iraqis more than anyone's very strange year but alhamdulillah I was very very yeah. lucky I remember last year, year. I, mean, I don't know if we can count last year as like a COVID year as well yeah half, half. 2020 still when I went because you mentioned like one yeah. in five Mawakib I just saw empty Mawakib on the way which yeah. was a bit weird compared really? to mm. compared to this time yeah and then when I speak to them you know, it's not busy this year, Arab Shino. Wallah, some of them were crying, mm. saying, Where are the Iranians, for example? <laughs> yeah. Because they just want to yeah. serve these these individuals. This is a war coming to Imam Hussein. So they really felt like they are not serving how they usually do. But alhamdulillah, this year, subhanallah, subhanallah. every Malkib was like <laughs> it was, in full throttle. It was, yeah. yeah, it was mind blowing. It was absolutely mind blowing. Mm. I think we all kind of had different experiences as well. So I say, I know you, of course, you were with them, um, you were reciting with a group. Um, Mehdi, I, I, you went with family, yeah, I believe. Yeah, 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 and for me myself, I went with with Ahlul Bay TV, and, mm. and I was with the team there and filming as well. So we all kind of had like <laughs> yeah. like a different experience of Arba'in, and I think that goes to, goes to show the beauty in it because you can do so many different things, you can be with different people, and you'll learn so many different things. Subhanallah. What Subhanallah. was like a a standout for you? A standout for me is that you came to Karbala this year. Me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that as a compliment. So you the whole ziyara? Oh, the whole ziyara? Ja- ja- no, because there's, 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 no, there's, no, there's, no, there's, no, there's a whole reason I, behind I this. That, that even subhanallah, that. someone that was in my ziyara group pointed mm. it out to me. Mm. And then he was like, your, your co-host, 
Yeah. Uh, you guys were having a show about Arba'in. Yeah. And uh, Ahmed was saying that he's not coming to Arba'in this year. And you told mm. him, I will see you in Karbala. Yeah. And then he goes, I saw you guys, you are both coming. So for him, it was like reminding yeah, yeah, me, yeah, yeah, of, yeah. you know, the power of dua. Yeah, we really hoped you come and we prayed you did. And Alhamdulillah, Sayyidna. that call was answered. It means a lot. And it was like, and it was amazing last... seeing you in the shrine of Imam Ali. Yeah. So that was yeah, like, uh, you know. It became real. Mm. Yeah, yeah it, it was. It was. It was touching. It was emotional. And and you know, you know, just like if I I kept asking myself and asking the people around me, how am I going to do this? Where well, I go back to London and I sit on my desk at work and I'm thinking, wow, this yeah. time last yeah. week I was in heaven. Yeah, it's such a weird feeling. And and mm. I remember like the the biggest thing I tried to take away was if if there's something I can keep with me that's like tangible and that allows me not to feel like it was a distant memory in the past. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But it's been, um, it's been weird because I, I arrived a week ago, I think today. Um, it was a really weird experience coming back. And well, I think we're still a bit out of sync. Yeah, the no. Yeah. The first time when I landed back, I was like, where am I? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, first, the first nights I remember I fell asleep when I came back. Waking up, I mean, where am I? Hey. Yeah, yeah. Where, where I'm looking, it's cold. Hey. So I'm in a comfy bed. I was like, what is this? What's happening? Um, but I think it's one of the, the miracles of Imam Hussain, one of the most beautiful things about his ziyarah is that when you go there, something that I've seen in the last few years, and I'm sure any of the Shabab who have gone, yeah, and you go, and when you're in London, you have all these hajat that you've got. You've got, for example, a list. I need help with work, family, pressing issues. I've tried every avenue. Nothing's working. I'm coming to you, Abba Abdullah. Yeah. But when you get to the shrine, and this isn't cliche, or I don't mean to be cringy or anything, but when you get to the shrine, it's like all of it becomes completely insignificant. Mm. You don't think about any of your hajat. Nothing mm. seems to be a problem. The only thing that you require when you get there mm. is just so that you tell me, Abba Abdullah, please bring me back. I don't, I don't want my hajat anymore. Al just, yeah. just, al just bring me back. Mm. And I feel like that when you come back to London, that, that want to be there again, I think that's Imam Hussein calling you back. In my mm. opinion, okay, maybe my opinion isn't important, but I feel like that means that maybe Imam Hussein recognized that I was there, that when I'm back here, my whole mind and my life and my everything in me just wants to be there again and wants to be there all the time. And I think that is one of the most beautiful, sad, yeah, and you come back, you're broken that you're not there anymore, mm. but it's something that drives you and constantly keeps you, pull, pulls you, that no matter what you're going through, everything you do every day is just so I can come to you again next year. Mm. And mm. I feel like that's one of the aspects of Ziara that is really beautiful and mm. important. SubhanAllah. Yeah, the connection. Is, is, there you go. There you go. Yeah. It's incredible. Mashallah. Mashallah. You know, before we, before we flew, <clears throat> we were talking, of course, about the, the importance of Arba'in yeah. mm. and about going. And there's there's so many hadith about um, the, the the benefit of visiting about Abdullah Hussein sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Of course, we know for example Imam al kadhim alayhi salam. He says, "Those who perform the ziyarah of my grandfather at the shores of the Furat will not return unless all of their sins have been forgiven." Allah, Allah subhanahu wa taala. Of course, there's so many others as well, you know. Yeah. And it just makes me feel like there's a spiritual cleansing that takes place, even if you don't. You don't mean for it to happen, you know. Mm. We go there, like you said, Mehdi. Like the knee is, of course, to come back and to, to do whatever service mm. you can yeah. when you're there and when you're when you're back home as well. But one thing I'm I'm still trying to process was, for me, the biggest takeaway. Well, when I went, when I was on my way, and I remember we talked about this before, Sayed. We said, oh, we should go and try and become better people and come back. Mm. Now, if I'm really honest, mm. my whole psychology on that is reversed. So, and I kind of feel like that's like an egotistical way of thinking about it. Like I'm going there for me and I want to transform and I want to improve my salah and X, Y, and Z. But when I went there, a sheikh actually mentioned to me something really nice. He said, think about the bigger picture. Think about the, the mission of the imam and the imam of our time. Sharif. And of course, once you do that and you understand the concept of what he calls social wilaya, you're part of a bigger picture. Yeah, and you're part of a mission where you're working towards the dhuhr of the imam and when you do that naturally a, a, like a repercussion or an added added a result would be the transformation of yourself do you see what i mean mm. so one thing i think i'd say my, my biggest takeaway my biggest lesson learned was that we are very insignificant and we're very small in terms of you know who we are and, and what we can give back to the imam but we can take a lot from him in terms of learning learning experiences and we have to buy into a bigger picture because we're blessed to be Zawar of Aba Abdullah. So, you know, it's I think I'm trying to change my mentality 
about the current imam and of course about, about Abdullah and how, how their messages intertwine with one another. Do you mm. know what I mean? Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, I agree, but I think that that's one of the, again, one of not the miracles, but the beauties of Imam Hussein and the, the, one of the incredible aspects of his ziyarah, not just his ziyarah, his, his majlis, his whole ethos is that anybody of any aim, any, I don't know how to explain it, anybody with any kind of direction, Imam yeah. Hussein accepts. Somebody who's there for a personal reason, Imam Hussein accepts. So you're there to be part of a big, big picture, Imam Hussein accepts. You're mm -hmm. there, Muasat zahra as condolence to Fatima zahra Imam Hussein accepts. Mm -hmm. Imam Hussein's um, message is so diverse. And I'm personally talking about um, uh, mentalities. I'm not of the opinion. I see a lot of people, Methan, when they portray the message of Imam Hussein, they'll say, oh, he was a social. Um, social justice social figure. Social justice figure, social yeah. other. Yeah, and he, when Na'am, he is a social justice figure, but limiting him to something like that, Imam mm -hmm. Hussein is everything. He encompasses that, yeah. everyone. It's not something that we can explain. And you're speaking about Imam Al Mahdi and about um, your what going to Karbala gives you. Imam Al Mahdi in Zat al Nahayil Muqaddas says, Assalamu ala man ja'al Allah al Shifa fi turbati. He's got cure mm -hmm. in his dust. Well, istijaba tahta qubbati. And the acceptance of your dua is under his dome. Well, aimmati fi dhurriyati. And the Imams are in his lineage. So. Um, we have to understand that by us going to um, Imam Hussein, well, that's right. We are at we are part of a bigger picture, one hundred percent. But your you need to know your worth as a zayar of Imam Hussein. Mm. Not everybody gets to go mm. to mm. go to Imam Hussein. You're written. You've got an invite. Somebody's written for you to go ziyar of Imam Hussein. Mm. So I think taking something personally, but of course you're right. Appreciating the bigger aspect of it is also something that's very very important. <coughs> and maybe inshallah something that we can focus on ourselves in terms of when we go, we see what we're part of. You know. And it was interesting, you know, how you guys have related it to Imam Sahib al-Asr wa Zaman. But when I was there, I was relating it to Lady Fatima al-Zahra, salam Allah alayha. She was watching down on the Zawar. And, you know, she's, she's the one who's writing our names down, inshallah. Mm. But the reason why that always came to my mind during the whole, mainly during the walk, by the way, yeah. is because Hussein's name was mentioned everywhere. And it's known that when Imam Hussein is mentioned, Lady Fatima Zahra is present. So, inshallah, you know, wow. we are, inshallah, accepted inshallah. as Zawar. And, inshallah, all those who haven't been to Karbala for Ziyarat al Arba'in get this opportunity. And I don't know if the listeners and people watching this podcast are yearning to go or you have been. Please let us know. Yeah. Tell us about your experiences. Comment down below in the comments. We'd love to hear. I think it's a good time to mention as well for everyone. Mm. We we had, alhamdulillah, Rabbil I mean, Hundreds, not even hundreds, thousands of names that were sent to us. Oh man! Um, Subhanallah! Yes. By yes. people who are praying, people spent sent specific du'as for family members who are ill, for children that they have who are suffering, for madhumin in their family who have passed away. There was messages that really touched me. There was there was a young child who had cancer mm. and is going through chemotherapy. Mm. There was um, a message about a father who had lived his whole life yearning and saving up to go to Karbala. He never made it and unfortunately passed away. We prayed for all of these people by name, uh, both in Najaf and Karbala. And inshallah, your, your ziyarah is accepted and, uh, on behalf of your marhamin and family. But comment down below, brothers and sisters, because we want, we want to hear if you went, how did you find it? How did you feel? And if you didn't go, what is what is your 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 plan or inshallah your near for next year? If you go, what is your manat or your oath that you're willing to make to the uh, the holy Imam and, and inshallah something that you will do if you you go a promise that you can make to Allah subhanahu wa taala that if He accepts your wish to go, you'll implement. Because I think for me personally, like that's a big part of it. It's um, I don't want to say like a transaction because that's mm. a very, and we know there's hadith mm. from Mila Mu'minin about the transactional worshiper. But for me, it's more incentivizing and it's motivating. Like, I feel like if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sees what's in my heart, then you know, I can't fool him. So I need to try and cleanse and purify and, and make myself a mukhlis individual. Like, and for me, that, that's been something which I've, I've tried to focus on. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, inshallah, in the coming months, you know, we can keep this momentum up. Because we talk about, all the time, we talk about the spiritual high that you gain in, yeah. in, in Muharram and... Yeah. How you try and keep it up in, in the months after And of course now we're wrapping up the Arba'in season And we're entering Rabi'il Awal What is your What do you guys think in terms of advice Or anything like that That we can do now To kind of keep things going And, and the momentum 
يعني if I can personally say um, يعني the fact we are now entering إن شاء الله towards the Rabi'ah الأول we are coming out the sorrowful months of Muharram and Safar it's important not to forget what we just went through yeah 100% so and you mentioned something early on like a moral compass I think you said so it gave me like an idea of that we can yeah. إن شاء الله use you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the compass but Imam al Hussein because the connection we had mm-hmm. during Muharram and Safar especially coming back from Ziyarah he's that north of course that north mm-hmm. point yani inshallah through imam al hussein we get closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah. not not that i'm anyone to give advice and this is actually a problem that i struggle with myself and actually while driving to here i th- i thought that was going to be one of the topics that comes up in terms of a spiritual high yeah. so the way i see it is that we go through we yearn the whole year for muharram muharram comes we hit an insane spiritual high that's yeah. un- unreachable mm. the period in between muharram and arba'in it's kind of like anticipation of Arba'in. Mm. It's not you're not there, but you're mm. you're waiting to be there. Yeah. You've got Majid say the say the Raqaya, Majid Imam Al Hassan, and then after Arba'in, of course, like we are still in days of sorrow. I think people tend to forget that. Yeah. I think as soon as Arba'in finishes, people seem to have kind of gone back to forget. their normal life. They yeah. forget that these are, these are the days of Al Muhsin, the son of um, Fatima al Zahra, who was unborn. In these days, I believe it actually might be tonight that the door of Fatima al Zahra was attacked. So we still mm-hmm. are in a mourning we process. Have wafat Rasul. W- wafat Rasul. Uh, say the Mas Maqam. So uh, uh, up, up until yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, up up until Farah Tazara, then when we can um, officially not wear the black anymore, and mm. and um, but for me it's very important, like the Sayyid was saying, to carry the message of Imam Al Hussein, not just in a way of attending majalis. Of course, attend majalis. You need to carry it in your everyday life and in an outright way. You know, people have this issue of like, they don't know their identity. They don't know who they belong to. They don't know, am I Shia? Am I British? Am I this? Am I that? What am I? You're a Hussein. You're, you've got, mm. you've got, the, the, wo- you've got mm. the world in front of you. Why would you choose someone else? So once you take that identity on yourself, when you go in the morning to a put, put Latmiya, يعني, keep, just keep some kind of reminder. Put Listen to Latmiya on your way to work. Listen to a lecture. you got Ten nights of lecturers from a lot, many good lecturers in the world. Yeah. Say you like three methana. That's thirty lectures you've got to listen to. How many drives is that for you? How many? If you mm. just keep up, just those little bits and pieces, and don't put Imam Hussein in the back of your mind, because as you were mentioning earlier, taking something from Imam Hussein and using Imam Hussein to cleanse ourselves, that doesn't have to be just an arba'in. That doesn't have yeah, to be course. just a muharram. Mm. Um, I believe. Sorry if I'm talking too much. No, no, I'm, um, I'm, I'm actually like, learning from this. Uh, so. but there's a hadith from Imam Sadr. Mm. Where he says, Kulluna Sufuna Najat. We are all arcs of salvation. Well, I can Safina Jeddi al Hussein, Akbar wa Asa. The, the <laughs> boat and the, the ship and the ark of salvation of my grandfather Imam Hussein is bigger and wider. And I don't know the exact words for it, but basically, we're saying, and in the sea, it goes faster. <laughs> so <laughs> that Imam Sadiq hasn't put. A, a limit on Arba'in. He hasn't put a limit on mm. Muharram. He hasn't told you take Imam Al Hussein as your as your Safina, as your salvation. Just during those months, we've got the whole year. Why do we forget him? It's as, true. Yeah. It's true. Mm. I mean, across the year for me as well, whenever I feel like I'm slipping, Imam Al Hussein brings me back. Of course. And whether it's poetry or, like you said, a lecture, or even even if it's something in the Holy Quran which you can relate to the stories of the Ahlul Bayt, mm. salam, and specifically about Abdullah Al Hussein. It's it's a reminder to us, and like you know what, Mahdi, something you mentioned just hit me, especially about identity. Yeah. Um, we talk about identity a lot on this podcast. Mm-hmm. We talk about how we how we classify ourselves and label because yeah. we live in a world now of labeling and identity, and um, for the first time, I think someone's giving me an answer which I myself can be content with. I'm from a very mixed cultural and ethnic background, and a lot of the time I feel very confused. But now I think I found a label <laughs> which I'm <laughs> which I'm going to shout with pride, inshallah. But um, yeah, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. One thing I wanted to ask you guys as well, because for me personally, everyone for the for the years I've been alive and I've anticipated going for Arba'in, everyone has always told me about the hospitality of yeah. the locals and all yeah. of that. What is one experience because I'm sure no matter how many times you can go it will always blow you away and you'll always learn something or see something that will shock you say let me ask you what was like one moment which blew you away hospitality wise or something that you learned from from some of the khuddam or anything like that yeah for me alhamdulillah I've experienced the uh, normally we see the hospitality at Karbala but the majority of the time people experience it during the walk, the walk yeah. mm-hmm. if, uh, you know the, every day every hour every minute there's like a special special something you can t- uh, learn from and you know be humbled from yeah best you know, this time I went with the Ziyara group for the when we landed and we left Baghdad we just came off Baghdad airport 
uh, Fajr time was very close. Mm. Uh, so we had, I think about 15 or 16 minutes, literally we were like counting the minutes with the driver for us to pray before sunrise comes out. So we found the Mokib in the middle of nowhere mm -hmm. off Baghdad uh, Airport Road and we stopped there for the first time. So we asked them, can we pray? They said, yeah, Bismillah, come pray. They turned on the lights, they arranged the flooring, everything. We were with Sheikh Ayyub. Sheikh mm -hmm. Ayyub led the Jama'ah and we finished. As soon as we finished, we turned around, everyone's cooking, <laughs> no they're getting the tea ready, that. and they haven't even started yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're saying we don't, we don't start normally, it's not like during the walk. So it's a place where they're not actually where they start early. So, but for us, they actually all, it was all children, it was like yeah. seven, eight year olds dealing with the chai, and then you had like the elders, they were dealing with, the, they were giving us harissa, it was mm. porridge. Yeah, they were yeah. giving us porridge. And as soon as we finished salah, we turned around and we can see all of this happening. We're like, it was something unexpected. And for many that were with us, it was their first experience oh, of yeah, yeah. someone like being very hospi hospitable to you. Yeah. yeah. And the, be the beauty of it, as soon as, you know, everyone ate their breakfast, everyone finished their chai, chai Abu Ali, we have to mention it, <laughs> is that the person was speaking Arabic to them. They didn't understand. If I was translating mm. to, to them what the, what the Khadim was saying, he was like, as long as you guys are Zawar, in Iraq, from our side of Iraq, you are our responsibility. Where you no sleep, way. where you Marshall eat, Marshall. where you pray, all of this. But that was like the first, you know, the first, we haven't passed one hour of touching, yeah, yeah, yeah. touching the land of Iraq. And Alhamdulillah, we experienced outstanding hospitality. It's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. For, for me, yani, Alhamdulillah, I've, I've been, Alhamdulillah, yani, honestly, Alhamdulillah, I've been mm. so many times to Arba'in and I've seen, I don't think I could put my finger on anything. There's just, it's, it's all around you. And that's what people don't mm. understand is that when you go to Arba'in, yeah, and it's truly, it's a wonder. It doesn't make sense. These, yeah. these things just don't, don't make sense. In the world that we live in now, imagine you tell your colleague, well, we go to Iraq, you walk from one state to another and you've got people begging you to eat with them mm. and begging you not because there's a camera, not because someone's watching, not because I remember um, a few years ago, I think it was now, some guy came and wanted to clean my shoes. Mm. Wanted to clean my shoes. I was looking at him and I was like, you want to clean my shoes? Why? Wow. Yeah. I remember he was hugging me and hugging and hugging. I hugged him back. It's like, well, why? He's like, because he, he, his entire life is based around the khidmah of Imam oh, Hussain, based around the service of Imam Hussain. And you know, what do we do here in London? We do a little bit minna, minna. You see if everybody has, thinks of themselves as someone big. Oh, we become khadam and Hussain. khadam and Imam yeah. Hussain. Speaking yeah, of yeah. that, um, there's, there was a, a clip I remember seeing from um, Sheikh Adil Karbalai. Mm. And for, for those that don't know, I know we have a diverse audience. Um, he was one of the people who began the member of Imam Hussein, who was, who was famous, I believe, in the 60s, 70s, around that time, Sheikh Adil Karbalai. He was, in, in, in his talk, he was saying, he was that, that me and you and whoever it is, does one act of Imam Hussein, seems as himself as a Khadim of Imam Hussein, calls himself a Khadim of Imam Hussein, get, something gets to his head, and I speak this to myself before anyone else. He says, he says, Jibra'il was the Khadim of Imam Hussein. Mm. He says, Jibra'il says, who is like me, men with me, and I have to Mahd al Hussein. And I'm the one who rocked Imam mm. Hussein's cradle. cradle. This is Jibra'il. Me and you, we aren't Khadam of Imam. We are, we're nothing. People label themselves as the Khadim of Imam Hussein. But I believe the closest you can get, or maybe people who are true servants of Khadam Imam Hussein, who genuinely do it out of their love and their passion for Imam Hussein, is those people who serve you in Karbala. It's, 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 it's the goal to get to that which drives us and the goal mm, to yeah. achieve. And I don't think it's right for anyone to label themselves, in my opinion, yeah. as I am a Khadim of the Imam. Like it's a very big honor to say of or, to, to, or, or you know to, yeah. be late, to give to have that honor and it's a blessing but um but the number of people there and the people who are doing the khidmah there they are truly khuddam. of course they yeah. really are like yeah. the, the hours they work then they save up for months at a time a taxi driver was telling me and the guy um you know i don't think he's like in the best financial situation but he told me i remember he said we saved up thirty thousand dollars over the last year since last Arba'in and we've put all the money into the Mokib wow. and I have um, a family member who's mm. who's local and who's, who lives in Karbala she's a young girl she was making uh, bread for the for the Zawar and um, she passed away the propane mm. propane 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 the tank gas, gas, yeah, exploded yeah. and she died as a servant of the Imam mm. like what an honor subhanallah yeah, to Allah be able to do well. yeah. To be able to do the khidmah and to, to die and to serve the imam, become a shaheed in that moment, 
it's an incredible service, you know. One guy said to me, and he's um, a young brother, and I was mind blown. I'm not, I'm mm. not gonna lie, but the number of young kids who are serving, of and course. like they, they are fully committed. Then yeah, they yeah. know what they're doing. They're being raised so well. One of the kids said to me, I said to him, "Are you happy? Like, are you enjoying it?" And he said, "Yeah, yeah, I love it." But I am also sad. I said, "Why are you sad?" He said, "Because in two days' time, this was during the walk." He said, "In two days' time, all of you would have arrived in Karbala." And we'll be here alone. Mm-hmm. And he goes, we will be empty and we'll, we'll have no one to serve. And he goes, I realize, and he told me, and we had someone translating. He said to me, he goes, I realize what an honor I have to be local and to be here serving you guys every year. And I know you guys come from far across the world and you wish you were in our shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He goes, I understand what big responsibility I have. Mm-hmm. I was thinking like the maturity of someone at such a young age to have that level of understanding it's an inspiration to us. And like you said, Mehdi, we think we're big shots here sometimes. <laughs> we're spending like thousands of pounds and we're, you know, we're like, yeah. you know, just doing things. And we think, yeah, I've, I've put in really a shift. You know, I'm a great volunteer for the Shia community in the UK. For Baba, like what, you know, it's, this is small things. Mm. Like in the grand mm. scheme of things, we're doing nothing. You know, so it's a very humbling experience to say it that. Is, it, is, it is indeed. And, you know, the, the, the group I was with, I yeah. said it was the first time for them, for yeah, many. Yeah. So for them, it was like something out of this world. Yeah. Was, some have been, by the way, yeah. to Ziyara outside of Arba'in, but they've never experienced the hospitality mm. of Arba'in. And I think what happened by them witnessing all of this, even myself, it softens the heart. Yeah, of course. Because it, of course. it really humbles you and it softens your heart and it makes you think, you know, these people who have nothing, well, the majority of them have, wallah, <laughs> yeah, they have nothing. They, have nothing yeah. they give everything. I think some, and, and, I think, and you don't even need to touch your money I, at I, all. I think it prepares you. I think all of that, seeing all this love for Imam Hussein, this before you get to the shrine, before you reach Karbala, seeing all this love for Imam Hussein, subhanAllah, I don't know what it is, it does something to your heart, it, it melts you a little bit, so that by the time you get to Imam Hussein and you see his shrine, you, you collapse because mm. of the amount of love that mm. you've been fed and the amount of love you've been given. And I think those, those um, khuddam, as I'm sure in, the, in, the, in their right, they are khuddam of Imam Hussein, they, they offer you this kind of, this serenity, this, this warmth in your heart. And I think that Imam Hussein, inshallah, he looks at all of them and he, he gives them all what we can't ever give them. We mm. can't thank them for this. This is unthankable. How, how can you thank somebody for preparing you to go to Imam Hussein? Mm. Um, so inshallah, if especially those children, may Allah and he bless them and keep them on this way. And if there's any way you should spend your childhood, if there's any place, it should be in the Khidmah, it should be in the Husseiniyah. I feel like a lot of people Beautiful. now... Not not that I'm not that I'm old or have children or anything like that, but I feel like a lot of people now, um, they they just don't bring their kids to Hasaniyat. They just mm. don't bring them. Like I remember when I was a kid, my mom used to drag me to yeah, Al We're gonna go to Hasaniyat. Um, and I, I feel like it was um, the the attachment from being a kid to Imam Al Hussein, even though I didn't really understand what's going on, but having those core memories and the Hussein, yeah. having them in the majlis, I think that's something that we definitely need to instill into yeah, yeah, our 100%. children, into our kids, the khidmah, the love of the khidmah of Imam Hussein. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's the tarbiyah, and it's the nurturing yeah. of children in today's day and age. The tarbiyah Al Husseiniyah. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. One of, the I best, love that. one of the best gifts you can give your children. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, it really is, to be honest. And, and now we, we live in a society where we are so distracted Mm. We have so many things that are going on in the world around us. And it's so easy to get caught up in the fast pace of life we're living. And these small, small reminders that we can make, mm. or even just small efforts or sacrifices we can make to go to a majalis or to go to, to, to force our kids to go, like you said, Mehdi, to listen to something on your way to work, uh, to recite Quran before you sleep and, and to reflect on your day and all of these things. These are things that we know, but sometimes don't really implement. Mm. And those small steps and changes, I think are, are, are metrics to, to, to judge ourselves on and to measure of how course. far we've come. So for example, I, I see this like place we're at now as um, like a flag point. I don't know if that's the right term, but we've laid down our flag and be like, okay, this is a milestone in the Islamic calendar. Mm. And I know what sort of maharam I've had and arba'in I've had and what sort of changes I've made. And that inshallah, in the coming months, we can assess how far we've come and where we've gone to. 
you know, and then hopefully, inshallah, by next Arba'in, inshallah, Allah gives us the, the health and, and the inshallah. opportunity to get to that stage and then even to go to, to visit Abu Abdullah Hussein. And, um, you know, we can assess where we've come and, and what we've done and how we've served in, in, in the year gone, mm. you know, because I think at the end of the day, if we're not growing and we're not using a lot of time on the earth, then, you know, what's the point? We're yeah. going to miss these days. Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, and we're in the we're in the prime of our life. I mean, we're, we're youth. Alhamdulillah, mm. I mean, we've got health, we've got wealth. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. we've got energy to go. Why not use this opportunity now? Like, of give course. every. You know, our parents tell us, our grandparents tell us. I wish I was your age, or when I was your age, I would have. If I was your age, I would have done this. Like that remorse or regret that someone can slip into at an elderly age. We don't want to get to that. We want to know like we've worked one hundred and ten percent in these years. And that every ounce of energy we have, we put towards serving the Imam. Hmm. If we can do that, inshallah, it's accepted. And, inshallah. You know? yeah, and, and what, what better way to give all that energy, to give everything, to have that life where your every bit of your energy is expended for Imam Hussein, mm -hmm. where everything, where I'm working so that I can get money to go ziyarah. I'm yeah. working, I've got money, I give it to a majlis. I'm working base, yeah, and you're talking about a spiritual connection and, and keep keeping going for the rest of the year. I think yani, if you, especially now, it's very hard to link the Ahl al-Bayt into your daily life. But even if you do it in a, in a cliche manner, say, Imam, inshallah, the Imam accepts whatever it is. If you try to base everything, so I'm not saying that's something that I do. I wish it's something that I did. But maybe it's a mentality that we can adopt where I'm working in this environment that I don't want to be in. That whatever it is, but I'm going to grind it out for you, Ya Abba. Mm. This money that I'm going to get is going to come for you, Ya Hussein. This, these hours that I'm doing, they're going to come for you, Ya Hussein. Don't forget me during those times, Ya Abba Abdullah, where I'm working so that I can come see you. I think putting the Ahlul Bayt at the forefront of, of our daily life is, yani, I, I, was, I was actually having this conversation with somebody, inshallah, but maybe you can give me your input as well. How, how lucky are we? How lucky are we to have Imam Hussein? People that don't have Imam Hussein, what do they have? I mean, what what use what what do they work towards what do they strive towards and it hit me this year it really hit me because I've started working now so I've been studying for the past few years alhamdulillah I graduated a few a few months ago and here I'm, I'm working and yeah I need I, I like seeing my paycheck I like seeing this I like making money I like course, I'm normal I'm 21 yeah. yani. I like making money I like buying nicer things whatever looking at cars looking at this looking at that and then when I go to my Hussein shrine and I looked at the shrine. I was like, Baba, when ya work, ya mm. I was like, what? none of it means anything. Nothing, yeah. Nothing like, means how anything how lucky moment. are we to have something which will give you the serenity in your heart and the, the peace and the love and the comfort in your heart that no material thing can bring to you. People don't have this. And yeah. I feel sorry for others. How how do you spend your year, your life, the 10 days of Muharram, the time of Arba'in, without actually knowing what's going on? Without yeah, having yeah, yeah. that. Yani, Alhamdulillah, we're so... We're so, so blessed to have the love of Muhammad Hussain. It's one of the, the things that makes us who we are. One of the things that keeps us sane, in my, in my opinion, is that really it's a massive, massive blessing having the love of Muhammad mm. Hussain. I, I just remembered some poetry by Nuri Sardar. Everything within me, Haidari Husseini. Yeah. Literally, that's like the explanation, yeah. the meaning, yeah, 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 yeah. the tafsir of this. The the <laughs> put put in yeah. the Mahdi Sahib number. <laughs> Yeah. Allah subhanallah and, and, and it's, a, it's amazing like how like just Imam al Hussein has made us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's our, our course, ultimate goal of course and this connection that we have inshallah continues throughout the entire year and to even I know there's people who always ask us you know how can I connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani as Shia the best way is Imam al Hussein without a doubt yani just, I, if it, if it's sorry to say it doesn't say like if, if we if we are not touched by the story of the Imam mm. Then either we're misunderstanding the story or we've not been told it correctly. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because the story of the Imam it, it will touch anyone's heart. Touch anyone they heart. say the hardest hearts will become soft from the of story course, of Abdullah. Of and if if, if there's one thing I think we've all picked up on and we've all learned is that there's a lesson to learn in Karbala to apply to any situation in your day to day life. You know, relationship with with family members, values that you have when you're interacting with people, forgiveness, the way you understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way you, you, you do the smallest things in your in your day to day interactions and activities. There's so many things and we've heard the maqatil so many times. We've heard the the stories, the interactions that the, the Imam had and the companions had and all the shahada had. Every single individual in in and around the story in the battle of karbala mm. teaches us something 
you know and it brings us together now and like you said Mehdi like we've we've now developed something we, we're proud to have it and we're blessed to have it it yeah. brings you a brotherhood in your day-to-day -day life at the bare minimum if we're not if we're struggling outside of um you know we're struggling with our spirituality at least we can engage in the brotherhood and the sisterhood that it gives us do you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that will pull us closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know we started off this maharam season for your information mahdi about um talking about we use the term called part-time Muslim muslims, muslims yeah. Okay. And, and yeah like and we all are so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah it's yeah, a heavy yeah, one yeah. but in the sense that yeah. i think self-reflection the sense that we all are like you said in yeah. maharam we're in a spiritual high and then we dip, dip. and then we have mm. ramadan and then this and things go up and down yeah. and in many ways our days go like that as well you know day to day we do good things and we do bad things but if there's one thing we can try and do is become less of a part-time Muslim or more of a consistent 100%, 100%, 100%. Muslim. Consistent, I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. become more consistent and, and try and implement small things. And speaking of the consistency you're saying, Annie, every year we can learn from every single aspect and individual from Karbala. And I think yani, the embodiment of people who gave their, their life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their life to the service of the Hilbayt would be the companions of Imam al-Hussein. Of course. Like you were saying, I think... Um, not that it's off topic, but I remember every year, um, the way I see it is that I learned something, I tried to learn something new that happened in the Maqtar, something that happened on the 10th of Muharram, that something I haven't picked up on before, mm. like something that I haven't. I think it was last Muharram, it hit me very randomly. I remember listening to the Maqtar when the, the reciter got to John's story. John, the, mm. he was the um, one of the servants in the house of Imam Hussein. And when I listened to it, it, it broke me. I've listened, I've heard it every year, every year, but I haven't focused on it. This you year, gave actually, it a focus. I gave it yeah. a focus. I thought about it. I listened to it and it hit me and I was like, this is what I want to reach. So when he comes to Imam Al-Hussein and he tells him, yeah, Imam Al-Hussein, let me fight. Let me fight for you. Imam Al-Hussein looks at him, is, yani, we can't understand the compassion in the heart of Imam Al-Hussein. He looks at him, he tells him, John, you've served your whole life. In your whole life, you've given us your service. You've served in my house your whole life. Go. He tells him, be free. Go find a plot of land. I've already interceded for you. Go find somewhere. Live there. Live your last days. Leave me. You don't need to. Do you know what John does? And this is a lesson for me. This is a lesson for everyone. When John hears this, he falls onto the floor. He collapses. He starts kissing the feet of Imam Hussein. And he says, Qabbahallahu al-Aish ba'dik. Mm. He says, Allah has made life worthless after you, Abu Abdullah. Mm. So I think if we apply that into our wow. daily lives, if we apply that without the service, without the love of Imam al Hussein, that genuinely we're nothing, that uh, even I, was, I heard one of the lectures, this Arba'in, and the person was talking about wasila, which is a very hot topic right now in the Shia yeah. world, wasila and, and the different views on it. This is not mm, a view, yeah. but this, this lecturer was saying, and it was imagine the, the feeling, listen to this in Karbala. <coughs> he was saying, he was saying, yeah, Imam Hussain, he's pointing towards the direction of the shrine. He was saying, I have no hope in my a'mal. There's nothing, nothing that I do is good. I have no hope in my lack of bad deeds. I'm filled with sin and with heinous crimes and acts and with everything. He says, I have no hope in my salah. Inshallah, late today, I'll pray tomorrow. I missed it today, I'll pray tomorrow. Fajr goes, you pray late. He says, I have no hope in my Quran. Let's be honest, we read it once a year in Ramadan and that's it. He says, my only hope is you, Ya Abdullah. He said, you're the one that's holding my hand and taking me. Mm. And I think if we apply this hope and this love into our daily life then I think we get a lot more clarity on where we're going on what we're trying to do if we just based everything on the companions of Imam al Hussein and the love Sorry. for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam as well Beautiful, wow, beautiful. Mashallah. I feel like you've gone up the pulpit. Yeah, yeah, Honestly, yeah, I've, 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 I've learned so much. You, you're passing a trance. Allah. 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 always give you more, more knowledge, to serve. And you're, you're doing so much. Last thing I want to ask you before we wrap up. Of course. Of course, you are, you are trying to bring Hosseini's spirit to yeah. London. Okay? Yes. And especially with the, with work with Shabab, yeah, different organisations, different different youth groups, and so on and so forth, but also kind of bringing in different cultures and communities. Why do you do that? Like, like on a level, I'm not. I don't want you to say <laughs> like, I don't. Yeah. I don't want you to give me like, oh, I want to serve the imam. I I, I want to like truly ask you, in your prime years, like yeah. you said, you're earning your money now. You graduated. You got a degree. Why, why are you spending so much of your time trying to serve Imam Hussein? Like what is it that's that's keeping you do that? Um, um, I, it's, a, it's a very tough question. 
I, I think it's probably best summarized by a line of poetry that I'm sure the Sayyid would know as one, well, I'm sure you'd know. The poet says, Tabkika Aini, my eyes cry for you, which of course is like a metaphor for all of uh, everything that I do for you, Abba Abdullah. Tabkika Aini, la li ajli mathubatin. I don't want thawab, I don't want anything. La kinna ma aini li ajli kabaki. It cries for you. Why do I serve? I'm not going to say for me, because I'm no one, but why do you all serve? Especially in London, especially in the West. Mm. It's purely for Imam Hussein. No, purely mm. because your your heart can't contain what happened to Imam Hussein. Like if you ask, even you go to any of those kids and and that you're talking, mentioning in, in Karbala, if you go to anybody, you'll be like, I'll be made Hamad. My my heart can't handle. I have to give something to Imam Hussein. And I feel like I I try to carry that. Why I serve is is just what what, what I love doing. Yani it's just what I feel like. What brings me bliss what keeps me sane what not that i'm saying that i'm good or anything like that but i feel like it's what's maybe saved me from doing things that i shouldn't be doing from going down avenues that i shouldn't be going not that i've not that i'm stuck for yeah. any good or anything like that but the reason why i serve is just because it's is it's my life's everything everything is a service of imam al-hussein I wait the whole year, just let Muharram come. Ya Aba Abdullah, come on, we miss it, let Muharram come. Muharram comes and flies by Imam Hussain, please bring us Arba'in, let's serve you again. Mm, Arba'in comes yeah. throughout the whole year, yani I'm, we, we, we yearn for it, I can think I can speak for a massive group of Shabab who, who love the service Imam Hussain. And I think especially that you mentioned distractions earlier that we've got here, I think the, the main savior from these distractions the main oh, uh, thing that we can work towards is imam al-hussein yeah and there's no uh, from from graduating from working from earning money you get a bit of yeah it has, you feel something and a bit of happiness a bit of, uh, a, bit of a flicker yeah, a bit, yeah. some temporary kinds of pleasure but what i've seen that has given me genuine happiness and genuine i wouldn't I would, i'd like to say purpose but i'm not on that level but Genuine serenity in my heart for me personally is the service of Imam Hussain. Is the love of Imam Hussain. That's exactly what I want to This is like the definition of Hubbul Hussain. No, no, honestly, no, no, don't say that. Honest, honest to God. No, yeah, and, 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 don't, don't say that. No, you, say that. You, no it's, you're, you're humble and mashallah may continue and even grow. But I just want to make something clear to the viewers. We always credit um, a lot of the Shabab in London and Mehdi, of course, works with the Akbar Foundation. And we said in a previous episode the work that they're doing. And the Shabab in, in that organization and many of the others are all of the same ilk that Mehdi is, mashallah. And from a young age, what they've been doing is is truly, truly inspirational. And I mean that. It's a lesson to, to you and I, say mm. of course, mm. especially to me. And inshallah, long may it continue. Long may, may your khidmah continue and, and may we all continue to be the servants of the servants because that is our, our ultimate goal, inshallah. So um, yeah, you've inspired me to serve more. Last the last on, 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 yeah, yeah, you've changed the whole perspective well, of, you, of you're how a, you're I see. Dude, I wish. Serving. La la la. I, I wish I could serve in the. In inshallah, the, the servants of the servants. Yeah. Inshallah. 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 Mehdi, thank you very much thank for coming. You, thank on. you very much for having That's, me on. No, it's been sorry if I've spoken a bit too much. No, 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 no. This is what it was. It was a reflection. This is what it is. We're trying to reflect. To trying to trying to understand, like you said. Yeah, like it's 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 genuinely impossible to put into words how we feel of right course, now yeah. and I think it, hopefully for people at home who've not been and, and sh want to go inshallah you can see the passion on um, uh, from from Mehdi and Sayyid Ali as well and and what they've experienced and how they felt going and, and what it's done for them and inshallah we can all go and be together again um, that is our goal inshallah brothers and sisters as always we want to hear more from you before um, you end the podcast bismillah I, I, I just had something I wanted to mention bismillah is Khabadun. that um, I'll spend about a minute or two is yeah that when we when I went Arbain Ziyara this year it was a very different experience okay why and I have to mention this is because the amount of people that I came across that are interacting with the podcast that's very true but I just want to say yeah, thank you to everyone that's been tuning in and you know engaging with the podcast and giving support to the podcast and they've said you know some the things they have learned from the conversations we're having and I was saying to one of the brothers for me it's just a conversation mm. but to see how it can impact someone's life mm. is something out of control so yeah. I just want to thank Ahlubi TV for allowing me to be part of this change in people's lives no it's an honor inshallah we can remain humble and, and I want to mention three names as well a brother called Murtaza I uh, called him Murtaza Harub by the way but his name is Murtaza from Luton brother Shah Nawaz from Manchester and one brother called Haidar 
from the UAE, Dubai. Mashallah. So these are three people who, mashallah, you know, kept telling me, I want to see Ahmed. Where is Ahmed? <laughs> Ahmed is here right next no, to me. No, no, alhamdulillah. It's, it's, it's been an honor. We've met so many, mm. so many supporters and viewers and it really means a lot. Please keep us in your dua, brothers and sisters, and inshallah we can remain inshallah. humble and, and continue on that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, we want to hear from you. So we want to hear how you felt. This has been our first Muharram season. We've, we've done a number of episodes. What have you enjoyed the most? Which episode did you like the most? And what do you want to see more of? Because the coming weeks are going to be completely different. So we're going to go back to talking about different things, mm. important topics every week, very pertinent and relevant issues. There's a lot happening in the world right now, as I'm sure everyone knows. Um, and it did, you know, we're, we're right, we release an episode every week, but it feels like there's, there's just too much to talk about. So we want to try and prioritize and we need your help to do that. So get in touch with us, leave comments on YouTube, um, send us messages on Instagram, TikTok, uh, and of course, follow, like, and subscribe. And we will see you next week. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.